We're back. It's another episode of Man Shit, and it hasn't been a month, so things are going pretty good. Like I said, it's up. Oh, Andy's cracking open a Coors Latte. We have got Emmett. He is still here. He hasn't gone back to finish out his contract work yet. And then we've also got Andy Shaver. He is, as he puts it, head guide at Stanfield Hunting Outfitters. He is a he is a goose guide. Been doing it for what over two decades? Twenty years. Oh, yep. Just that man. And how old are you? Thirty. Yeah. Wow. I thought you right. you didn't turn thirty one this year. I'll be thirty one uh, September twenty six. But oh, right, okay. I'm still fucking thirty. So just pump the brakes. <laughs> I'm not moving on any. You know, thirty is what it is. Well, if, we're the old ones here because how old are you, Mister Emmett? Oh, somewhere around twenty five or so. <laughs> oh, you fucker. Anyways, <laughs> so no, Andy, uh, we got him here. He's actually uh, in the in the summer months because obviously you can't hunt geese year round. No. Nope. He uh, he he and his uncle do some. Uh, renovations and things like that on homes pretty pretty much other man shit he's helped me a lot on my house and right now he's helping me on my office so that we can move off of my wife's bar in the kitchen (laughs) and graduate up to an actual studio but anyhow that's kind of what we've been doing today Emmett said there's uh, razor blades on the counter and we're covered in white stuff. So he was pretty curious what we've been up to. (laughs) Yeah it looks a little suspicious in here. (laughs) You missed a you missed a really good time though. Oh, it, really it was a did. blast. It's so much fun spraying texture and things like that. So anyway, tell me tell me a little bit about yourself, Andy. Man, you know, it's uh, I'm one of the rare ones in this life that get to uh, wake up and live the dream every day. Uh, I knew from my first goose hunt kind of what I wanted to do in life, and then uh, I, I, I set out to do just a couple things. I wanted a hot wife. <laughs> Who doesn't? Check. Okay. She's a dime. Okay. And then uh, I just wanted to guide goose hunts, and that's that's kind of what I've been fortunate enough to do. Uh, my dad and uncle started Stanfield Hunting Outfitters in, well, he's my stepdad, but fuck off, uh, <laughs> 1992, 93. And, uh, yeah, just he, he, they started taking me hunting, and sky's the limit. Took off after that, did my first goose hunt, and fell in love with it, and been doing it ever since. Don't want to do anything else. That's well, for sure. And- and kind of a tangent too, like a, a saying that, as you mentioned in our last episode about Forrest Gump, another saying is he was like a duck in water. So that's why Andy is so comfortable right now. They've also got the Big Honker podcast, oh, which yeah. has been blowing up in the aviation industry. Um, or not aviation, Avi- Jesus Christ, <laughs> in the hunting industry. <laughs> Actually, I don't know of anybody in the aviation industry. I was, I was wondering where you were going with oh, that. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I, I looked over at your timer and got sidetracked. <laughs> He's really, that's, that's my bad. But anyways. He's really good in the aviation industry. Yeah, it's killing it. People in the aviation <laughs> industry, they want to know all the latest goose hunting tips and all of that. But no, yeah. anyway, that was my failed attempt at uh, also plugging the, the podcast, which you guys had me on as. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but Andy's actually my cousin. So his yep. dad is my uncle. It's a small world around here. Obviously, there's only about 5,000 people in a 100-mile radius, but it is what it is. Yep. And uh, wouldn't have it any other way. But how's the how's the podcast been going? It, the the podcast has blown up. So <clears throat> a couple things. I, I I went to my my dad Jeff Stanfield, and I was like, Hey, listen, uh, there's not a whole lot of other podcasts in the waterfowl industry. So let's start one. At the time, there was maybe one or two others, and they weren't very consistent. So I was like, Let's let's do it. It'll be fun. We got nothing else to do. It's it's late spring. Summer's coming up. So, fuck it. Let's do it. And uh, started it, I think, in April. I can't remember the exact date. Jeff could tell you better. But uh, did it. And then it just it's just blown off bigger than anything. Uh, how many episodes are y'all up to now? We're like up to fucking 62. We do, we do three a week. It's, wow. It's turned into a bit of a job. But, <laughs> uh, you know, guys like it. Guys like... Uh, you know, we kind of mix. There's only so much waterfowl hunting you can talk about. Right. And we've done 62 episodes. So we kind of mix it with a little bit of politics, a little bit of sports. And guys, you know, it's it's kind of like the Man Shit podcast, but it just, we talk about waterfowl hunting and then we go off on our tangents. And Well, and then you also have like, another way. One, one thing that you guys do, though, that we don't is you... You do tips and things like that, which we talk sure. about something specific to pork choppers and right. stuff like that. But you also, uh, 
when you get on man shit style rants, it seems like some people get pissy about it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, you go through and read some of the comments that you get and maybe a couple reviews and they're like, oh, I wish they'd just stick to waterfowl hunting. And that's fine. I mean, I'll, I'll talk waterfowl hunting to anybody that wants to know. Yeah. I get messages every day where guys are, you know, picking my brain about this or that, and I will answer any of them. And we've done uh, we've done podcasts on just decoy spreads, uh, just full bodies, just silhouettes, which are types of decoys that you can do on, on uh, goose hunting. And man, it's just there's other shit going on in our world that's fun to talk about, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, you get any of the leaders in the waterfowl industry, and you guess what? They probably watch football or baseball. They probably see what Trump's done in the day. So uh, just to, we don't want to be put in a box of just, oh, you you have to just talk about waterfowl hunting. So uh, we try to keep it relevant and entertaining. One guy, yeah, one guy said, uh, they're entertaining as hell, but if you're looking for information, they're subpar. Well, guess what? I'd rather be entertaining than uh, pump you full of information any day. Yeah, you're, if, that's what Google's for. The, yeah. The Google machine. And if you go back far enough, I'm sure there's an episode of whatever tactic you were wanting to find. I'm sure we've already. Yeah. Done. You guys did like a 20 episode stint where it was. Yeah. It's all it was. It was just how to kill geese, how to kill ducks. Right after Johnny Clay Reed. Right after Johnny Clay Reed. <laughs> yeah. Have John- you listened to those, Emmett? No. Oh, my God. You've got to listen to the episodes with Clay Reed, the coyote man. Jesus. Yeah. That guy has got some stories that will blow your mind. You guys, too, if you. Check it out. It's on iTunes or Spotify or anywhere else that it's Stitcher. published. Yeah. Uh, just look up the Big Honker podcast and go check out. Uh, there's two episodes, actually, with the Coyote. Is it Coyote Man? Is that what he calls himself? Coyote Man, Clay Reed. Oh, man. That story he was telling about him not knowing his wife was pregnant and she yeah. having their – was their daughter in the toilet? Yeah. What? He and cut then- the umbilical cord with the serrated kitchen knife? <laughs> That's some man oh, shit right there. <laughs> you got to listen to that, He's- dude. Listen to it on the airplane on Friday. You'll that, die. That think, sounds like a bad country song. Oh man. man. It's the first one. It's a, it's it's Clay it's Coyote Man Clay Reed uh, number one where <laughs> he delivers so he pulls his newborn child out of the toilet and go get the steak knife and Johnny Clay Reed. Johnny Clay Reed don't do that. He don't play that shit. <laughs> but yeah, that that's fun. And then we started getting some more guests on and you know, lot really centered toward uh, waterfowl hunting. So I think that we put out a really good show. Um, it's definitely, I've, I've listened to most of them. I've kind of fallen behind lately just cause I haven't had as much time. Been busy. Uh, yeah. And, but no, um, even the ones that are informational, it's something that someone that's never hunted. I mean, like I'm only, uh, duck and goose hunting with you guys. That's right. it. So I could listen to that information and at least do a half-assed job and right. know, you know, it, it would save if you were interested in getting into it, or if you're already kind of into it, it'll save you money because, there's recommended things to buy, not to buy, how yep. many to buy, and it's all according to location. And there's also, you know, just a plethora of other tips and tactics. Anyway, um, that was a pretty good plug there. So we'll move on to appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> to, to this yeah. podcast. Go check, out the, go check out the big. Article. But yeah, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. We're entertaining. We hope to be entertaining. If we just beat a dead horse and just cram information, you might as well be back in high school. Yeah, nobody uh, wants that. Well, and and. Uh, like, and think of how much better you learn when you're entertained. Right. Like yeah. science, chemistry Dude, would have been just, so much easier. You just can't make everybody happy. But, There's no way. No, it, it it's tough. But the, the, the fans we have, we're very appreciative of them. So. so, and you guys just did an episode with James Washington, right? James Washington, yep. So, uh, so this will be receiver. a good one because, Emmett, how much do you like the NFL and football? I could give a rat's ass about the NFL or football. Okay. And I, I kind of I don't watch it either. You know that, Andy. Yep. Um, Andy and Jeff and all of those guys, they are avid uh, fanatics. So tell us a little bit. This is why um, the name James Washington is pretty cool to us because, I mean, Andy's from Knox City. That's the same place I graduated high school, 1,200 people in the town. Um, I live in Haskell now, 3,322 in our town. And it, it's this is why it's a big deal. So who who is James Washington? Okay, so – We've got an area here, and James Washington grew up in Stanford, Texas, which is only from Eric's doorstep right here. It's only 13 miles away, okay? And then James Washington grew up, and he played at Stanford. 
a small, small community. Not Stanford College, Stamford, Stamford Texas, with an M. And uh, you know, re rewrote all the all the record books at Stanford. Uh, he had actually committed to a smaller school, Texas State. I think it's D two or something. And then Oklahoma State said, "Hey, we'll give you a full ride scholarship, whatever you want." And so he goes and lights it up at D1 ball. And then uh, this last year, he was a second-round draft pick. Pittsburgh Steelers took him. So uh, for – nice. <laughs> Love it. Crack another one. Uh, <laughs> but for this area to have a have a uh, an NFL, I think he's going to be a future star. I mean, the kid's humble. He's a How old worker. is he now? 22. Wow. That's, That's cool. so crazy. But the other – connection that we have is that eric and i uh our high school coach was also james washington's james washington's high school football coach coach hutch yep oh cool when coach hutch left coach hutch coached us uh eric graduated in 05 i graduated in 06 um and then our school actually bumped down to a uh, six man uh, the year they they ran out of talent, ran out of yeah yeah ran out of kids. <laughs> we actually qualified for six man numbers uh, three or four years before they did it, and then uh, I played my last game, and then Coach Hutch came in and said, "Listen, guys, we're going to bump down to six man." And then he was it wasn't soon after that he deuced out, so he went to Stanford. Now Coach Hutch is one of the greatest high school football coaches in Texas because Stanford, what most people don't know. The three years before he got there, I think in all three years they won four games. He took over. Yeah, they o- were terrible. He took over an zero and ten team. Okay, that's what he left to go to, and everybody looked at him like he was crazy. Yeah, but he had been scouting that younger crowd coming up. Might have been. <laughs> so two years in, they're a playoff team. Three years in, they're going to state, and then they won two uh, uh, two state titles in three years. Yep, so, yep. And James Washington played on all three of them. He was a stud in, in all the state games. But. That's that's just – to me, that's crazy. And I'm even, like, you know, not being football fans, just that the the micro percentage of the odds of someone being in a 1A school district making it to the professional level, let alone a second-round yeah. draft pick in the NFL, making the big bucks. I mean – and what's cool about him is he's a hunter. That's right. Yeah. Big, big predator hunter. Uh, Ty McLemore, who was just a little shithead whenever we were in school. Sorry, I, g- I gave him one of my hats and he had me autograph it. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I was badass. He didn't know me that well, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ty was just a shithead. I don't know if I can oh, – fuck it, I'll tell it. Ty was probably in the second grade. And you know those coaches' kids. They're raised around the locker room. They're raised around 16-, 17-year-old kids. Yeah, they, they, they know too much. And we had a kid, <clears throat> we had a, a kid in our locker room that was very well endowed. Who? And we won't mention any name. Very well endowed. Was it? Was it? Was it the one who uh, was discussed yesterday? Yeah. Okay. So he was very well endowed, <laughs> and he was not afraid to uh, take his trousers off. Me, listen. If I'm if I'm getting naked in front of a guy, in front of twenty other guys. I'm keeping my T-shirt on. Oh yeah, and putting the jock strap on, yeah. praying that you know everything's hidden. I dude, was just, dude. I always just told myself that I was just being courteous to everyone else. <laughs> Do you have to be well endowed to take your pants off? <laughs> it depends on the circumstances. Light how how lit the room is. Yeah, if there's males or females or both in the room, um, d- there's a lot of extenuating circumstances. <laughs> oh. Oops. <laughs> My bad. Put, put your pants back on, Emmett. So anyway, uh, one uh, one day, Ty, a second grader at the time, goes home to his mother and says, <laughs> "I think I've heard this." Story. Mom, do you know what such and such does with his penis? Mom says, "What? What are you talking about?" He's like, "Yeah, he swings it around like a microphone on the end of a long cable, and then he puts it up to his mouth and says, Hello, ladies.'" <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! So I don't know how we got on Tom Ackermore, but yeah, that that was a oh, but yeah, hunting buddies with hunting James, buddies Washington. James Washington. Yeah. So uh, yeah, James is a big. Uh, he loves predator hunting, loves dove hunting, but you know, with with playing football, he hadn't got to uh, got to dove hunt because it obviously it opens in the middle of football season, so he didn't get to do a whole lot of that. But he loves likes predator hunting because you can do that in the spring and uh, yeah, that, yeah, because there, there's Washington. not much deer hunting goes on in in. Uh, Football season. I used to have to sneak out. Like, yeah. 
I'd go hunt and I had to get out of the blind like an hour after I sat down because I had to be back for Saturday morning workouts. Yeah. And like, I don't, you know, I don't know, uh, even now, like even if, even if you have that off week, it's probably, if you're playing professional football, it's probably not off. No, I wouldn't think so. Mm-hmm. Which, which up there. if I would have been making that in high school, I'd have skipped hunting too. Hundred <laughs> percent. And that was an, that was another thing that we looked up. You know what the average NFL career is? How many years? Uh, five. I bet you it's probably four. Three point three. Wow. I can skip hunting for three point three years. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, really. If you have a long career in the NFL, you're talking eight to ten. I can skip hunting for eight to ten years. If that means that I'm going to make 100, 200 million, because then after what's, what's then after the average that, salary? Oh, the the league minimum is 500 grand. That's if you're just on the practice. Is that squad. is that a year? Yeah, if you're just on the practice. So you can squad. go get the shit beat out of you as a practice dummy for 500 k. Okay? Yeah. Oh, sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I still got both my legs and two good arms. <laughs> beat them, beat them off of me. Beat the shit out of me. <laughs> if I can I just care. hold out for about four years, I'll be good to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah Jane, he's he's look like a just a blob of flesh. Chop him off, <laughs> 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 like a character out of three hundred. <laughs> whatever, whatever it takes. I'll take that five hundred k. Thank you, sir. But yeah, he I have another. Came from a small school, uh, and just worked his way up. Yeah, hard, that's... hard work pays off. I asked him in the interview. Coach Hutch always had sayings. Uh, did you ask for some of them? I did. Same ones or did you get new ones? No, nope, same one. You know what it was? It sticks out with him today. What? Work hard, re- work hard, you get rewarded. He said we'd be in, <laughs> we'd be in two a days, and a little bitty cloud would blot out the sun a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and Coach Hutch. Work hard, got rewarded. I'm telling you guys, you work hard, you get rewarded, guys. Uh, I'm telling you. I remember I'm saying that in two a days once, and it was the same deal, and like, 13 seconds goes by and the sun's beating you to death yeah. again. You're like, work a little harder, fuck fucker. you, coach. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. was working hard. I was working hard the whole time. What about the times I work hard and don't get rewarded? Yeah. What? I well, no, okay, so, so I know, okay, this this is something, I think I know how you guys deal with it, but so being, like, just to break it down, like, it's always fascinated me, uh, growing up in the younger years, uh, Andy's stepdad is Andy's dad, Jeff. He, I'm talking about when, when you talk about people who know football players in the NFL, it's like, oh, yeah, so and so, he's good. He went to college here. He did this, this, and that. And then he went yeah. to high school there and set all the records. And it's like, how the fuck does he know all this shit? Yeah. Well, now Andy's pretty much that guy, too. Fantasy and football. Is turn, that how it happens? Turn me into that monster. <laughs> well, so when all of this kind of shit's going on, like you're such an avid fan of the, of the sport, of the league. When all, what do you think about all the kneeling bull crap? Number one, I'm going to say this. That's not the venue to do it at. Um, it, the problem that I have with the kneeling is there's no end to it. Okay, so you, you ask five different guys that are kneeling, they're going to give you five different answers. What are you kneeling for? Black Lives Matter. Okay, cool. Go on to the next guy. What are you kneeling for? Animal rights. Cool. What are you kneeling for? And you're going to get a different answer each time, most of the time. Uh, and it's like, they're just kneeling cause it's a cool thing to do right now. They're not giving us an answer as to, um, when this happens, when this social inju- injustice gets fixed, I'll stand again. Right. It's, that, it's, there's it's, no... it's unending. It's, it's not a clear cut. This is what's fucked up with the system. Fix this. I'll stand. You're not hearing that. If I heard that, I'd be like, mm-hmm. okay, well then let's fix this. And you know, you do what you got to do, but it's just kind of open-ended like, oh, well, you know, uh, we don't really like this part. Uh, we want equal pay for equal work or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're not arguing for equal pay for equal work. Yeah, no. <laughs> but. No, I, I completely agree. And, you know, I can't remember who it was talking about it or where it was. It, uh, it's just, it's slipping my mind right now. But um, someone said, and I want to say it was someone that has a pretty big following on social media or something like that. It was. Where the fuck have you been in the off season? You yeah. took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. It's like you've been kneeling in all these fucking ball games where these families are paying hundreds of dollars and right. traveling to come watch their their idols and their kids' sure. idols to see them play football and perform at the at the highest level of athletic capabilities. Right. Yet when it's off season, yep. 
they're out doing their fun shit. Right. It's like, why aren't you out leading some kind of protest or 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 having yeah. some kind of gathering? Like they sure. have enough influence, people would go. Hundred percent. Do I it mean, on your own time. Don't fuck with my time. Yeah. Even Colin Colin Kaepernick's piece of shit ass. Like he's a terrible football player. I thought yeah. the little I've seen of him, yeah. and it's it's like, okay, he's got enough of a fan base, especially since he was the first one to do this bullshit. Mm-hmm. He could have say, "Hey, we're having a rally. Come yep. get behind me." But so get, get cor- your pickets. Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't the NFL lose a shitload of ratings over the last year? Yeah, it's very. It's way down, uh, according to the the stats that I've seen. Um, you know, there's a couple different things you could do. Uh, one, they didn't televise the national anthem until after 9/11. Uh, 9/11 happened, and then uh, you know. Obviously, everybody was patriotic at that time. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, before nine eleven, it wasn't televised. Just because it was, it was just something. Just go the routine. Get you, get you a beer, and you know, yeah. we'll we'll come back when kickoffs here. Oh, okay. So, so after nine eleven, they started televising it. Um, so would the answer be to stop televising it? You could do that, and then you just don't even know who 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 knelt, and then they they're not getting the fifty. Yeah, kind of like mm-hmm. now. I mean, you know, I, I there, think, there's I think be the extreme to people that. would. I think the extreme people would lose their shit. Yeah, there's going to be protesters oh, to that because, you know, this is America and everybody should stand. Um, I also think that any mass tragedy that happens, if there's another school shooting or something, we shouldn't televise. We shouldn't put out names. We shouldn't put out pictures. No, because absolutely. How many people are doing this just because it's going to put me on air? Yeah, they're they're loners. Most of them are the loners who are bullied and set to the side and, and nobody gives a crap about poor old me and i'm just gonna i'm gonna make a statement well then they surrender now you remember used to they used to kill themselves yep if somebody lost their mind and went on a mass murder they'd kill themselves yeah now they don't they give up they surrender because now they get to go you know they get sure. three hots in a cot and they're fucking in the history books yep i killed Correct. 37 people at this school yeah. i'm People finally notice me, though, by God, and it's like, man, right. if, if they just start stringing people up from trees and shit like that, sure. oh, old school shit would never it, happen. It, it'd be done. We need to bring back public execution. Oh yeah. Well, just don't. Just something. It's like make an example. I mean, it's honestly there's so few states that even enforce the death penalty anymore. Yeah, and even like Texas, we kill everybody that fucks up, but it takes it takes 10 forever. Years. It's 10, like, what, 10, what the years? fuck are you waiting on? Right. Like, why, why are you going to feed them? It, I've you know seen it, what it looks like when they do it. It ain't that hard. It's just a few shots. Get them in line like a cattle deal and clear them out. Then the prison systems open up. That solves one problem. I mean, of course, most of them in there are illegal immigrants now. But do that, and then also the tax dollars aren't going toward feeding the motherfuckers that commit atrocities. Like, I saw something. Uh, I want to say it was like... Who was it? Was maybe Louisville police or something here in Texas? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, I, I just read the title because I can't read shit like this since I've had kids. But the the headline was um, "Good Samaritan Neighbor Save" or "Good Samaritan Neighbor Shoots Man Stabbing Toddler to Death." And it was like they wow. uh, a guy was stabbing his like two year old to death, and he tried to stop it. Of course, the kid still died, but it's like right. put that dude to. Express Instant. lane should like, be should be tomorrow. Once yeah. once the guilty 6 verdict is down, once the once he's found guilty by his peers, you know we shouldn't get away with uh, no no due process. It's, especially if you have like an eyewitness account like that. Like, yeah, yeah, I shot him. He was stabbing that kid to death. The kid's dead. Stabbed to death. Yeah. Boom. No court needed. Did you know that? I, it's either Utah or Nevada. I was fixing to look it up. They still have the firing squad as part really? of the death penalty. Like you can you That'd can be a choose. good one. Yeah. I think That'd be a good one. I think it's Utah. Utah. I think so. They like their guns. It's it's one of those. It's one of those. I've heard I've heard of that. Yeah, just put them out there and get it over with. Yeah, I mean, but but that's the thing though. Like these kids that are that are seeing this, just back to the point on uh, being uh, basically, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, basically. No, that, put in it the wasn't place. him. <laughs> <laughs> Basically put up on a pedestal sure. for, for committing an atrocity yep. in their heads yep. because they're getting eons more attention than they've ever had in their entire lives. Mm-hmm. Even though it's negative attention, they, they don't, don't care. care. No. They, uh, and That's why they did it. Exactly. So they do that, and then they just waste away in prison, you know? 
they, oh, well, you know, they were only 17. And then they'll probably get out five, yep. six years. Will they do it again? Probably not, but they might. They, they might say, hell, last time I did this, I got a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. I got my butt fucked a lot, but I got a lot of attention. <laughs> That's, so, that's good attention, too. It so, felt nice. Slowly crawling back out of this rabbit hole. I <laughs> sure, went down yeah. here with, yeah. with shooting yeah, people. Help and, me, Emmy, oh, help shit. me. <laughs> we're coming, we're coming. So, <laughs> re, I may be wrong here, but didn't the NFL come out and pretty much kind of put a stop to the kneeling thing? Yeah, no. and then... And they said a fine, didn't they? They said a fine, or you can stay in the locker room. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, If you feel that you got to kneel, just stay in the locker room. And, uh, and now the NFL uh, PA, basically the union, is saying, no, 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 that's against their rights, whatever their rights are. I don't know. And uh, so I don't know where it's See, at See, but the, the thing is, what a lot of people don't understand about that, of course, you know, you get the union involved and it's always a shit show, but the NFL is a business, just like any other business. Just 100%. like. Stenfield Outfitters, just like Pork Choppers Aviation. And what a lot of people don't realize is that they can put their foot down and stuff like that and say, no, you're not going to do that. You're costing us business. Ratings are down. Mm -hmm. And Well, you know, um, I don't like the Dallas Cowboys. My team is the the Green Bay Packers. But Jerry Jones came out and said, "You you will put your foot on the line, you will put your hand over your heart, and you will stand. Or you will not play for the Dallas Cowboys. Every and one of and these, that's all it took. And that's all it took. Every one of these guys is playing for an owner. One guy. Well, Except for the Green Bay Packers well, there. I don't know I don't know how all that works. You, but you most know, like, of the guys have a boss. Right. And in college, I worked at Best Buy. God dang. I'm sorry. That was my dog bringing his chew bone in here. He just really likes to play. He loves to play. But no, um, so at Best Buy, let's say we had a team meeting every morning, which we did. Before uh, we open, so if you really? were uh, not like a team meeting, like a football game, but I'm just like, <laughs> God damn it, Lewis, say more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, coach. <laughs> Sorry, but no. So basically, we would all gather up and we would yeah. talk about the day's sales goals, right. uh, what we need to push in terms of products to meet goals for the month, shit like that, and it'd be the same thing as if I was like, no. Fuck y'all, I ain't going to that meeting. Not Guess how long that. I'd have a damn job? About zero seconds. Exactly. So mm-hmm. that's essentially what it's boiled down to at this point. And, and all the all the guys are like, you know, oh, there's going to be a fine? Fuck that fine. I'm still kneeling. I'll pay the fine. And it's like, well, obviously they didn't make well, the fine enough if that's the case. It's kind of like with Michael Jordan and, and the Air Jordans. If I'm correct, the NBA put a fine on him wearing – his own brand of sneaker. And Probably. he was just like, ah, well, five grand a game. I I can pay that. Yeah. You know, it's marketing. Yeah, yeah. They're making millions. It's just like the head coach from uh, the New England Patriots. He wears a hoodie and he cuts the sleeves off down to his elbow. Right. And the NFL, I've actually seen that. And the NFL said, uh, that's not dress code. We're going to find you. You know what he said? Fucking cut him off at his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what he wears. He fuck it. I'm you know I'm a multi multi gazillionaire. Here's my fifteen grand every week. Have fun with it. And that guy won more Super Bowls than like yeah, anybody in the fucking world. Yeah, he's he's probably the he's probably the greatest coach of all time. Whenever he's done, I guarantee uh, you, all of our fans that that listen to this podcast that like football are six to midnight on this episode. <laughs> and after Andy's not here, they're gonna be messaging like. <laughs> Hey, bring that guy that actually knows what we like back. <laughs> this is your sports episode, folks. Yep. Yeah. You're Here's, welcome. Get you're, your taste of it now because when I'm gone, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he, he only lives 22 miles up the road. Or how? Is it 20? No. Not even. Yeah. It's close. It's a 20-minute drive. I'll take my shit over there if he starts getting too famous for me. <laughs> no, I don't I don't see that happening. Well, actually, time. I could just bring my recorder and hook up to y'all's podcast equipment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just knock it all out we'll at just, the same time. Get my mom down here. She loves football and can bench oh, press yeah. more than most men. Yeah, your mom and she runs like forever. Yeah, yeah. She, she can do more than. She's most got a men. badass sink in y'all in their kitchen. I know that. She does I'm, real man shit. I've never seen a yeah. five foot long sink in my life. <laughs> oh. Five foot long. It's like a cattle trough. Yeah, pretty much. Except for it's not as deep, and it's got like these. Oh man, this is a stupid, stupid fucking segue. <laughs> anyway, 
So, okay, we talked about that. So, uh, uh, yeah. So one of the, you know, like we were mentioning earlier, we're we're not old. I, I'm going to keep telling myself that. I'm, I'm 30. Not old. In December, I turned 32. My if, back hurts a lot, but I'm not old. Yeah, fuck that. We're still young. Our parents are older than we are, and they always will be. That makes us young. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, um... Do you, so, do you find it crazy the shit that you say that you thought you never say? Yes. And it's all shit that I've been told I would say and they were always right. Yeah. And it fucking sucks. I mean, just like today we were working and uh we had we had 90s rock on. We had Hootie Hootie and the Blowfish radio going. Yeah. And we hear a song and we're just well, like What was it? Uh I can't remember it? what it was. And maybe. Yeah. 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 It was that Gonna be the one that saves me. <laughs> and and we, we both looked at each other and we were like, they just don't make music like they used to. And we're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> no. Marble, marble, marble. They don't make music like they used to. The oldies were better. <laughs> yeah. So we we're like, God, don't mind. We yeah. fucking said it. Big time. Yeah. It's, it's kind of <laughs> embarrassing. But at the same time, getting old is not all that bad. But uh, one thing that. We were actually Emmett. Uh, no, no, no. It was uh, me, Andy, and one of our friends from school, from high school, uh, Ty Chisholm. He actually visited through town. You, uh, you briefly came through, but you had to take mm-hmm. the helicopter back. Maybe he'll listen to this podcast. Yeah, maybe we can tell him he's in it, and he'll <laughs> sit there for like forty-five minutes <laughs> waiting to be at this point. One more viewer. One more viewer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. But um, no, we were talking about it, and he made the comment. He's like. Dude, you guys know we're millennials, right? <laughs> and I was like, I refuse. fuck yes. I, I know, refuse. but like, I, I think the oldest, it may be this year, it may be up to 37 years old. But that you may, old? Yeah, 37 down to... I think it was like 18 or... No, I think 18-year-olds are now like generation... My youngest brother like, is, a, is a different... Gen, pain, it, pain is a different... Is it generation... Gen, generation X. Is that what no, it is? I think Generation X is before us. I think it's Y. Get on that Google machine I, and I'll keep talking. I think it was really funny before there was clarification on the age ranges of millennials. There was like for like a solid six months to a year there, there was so many people talking shit on millennials. Mm-hmm. And then like the numbers they, they came out. out. They're like, <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, I'm in that age range. I'm a millennial. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 That's what sucks about it being a generation. And I'm sure that's the same way with like the greatest generation and all. Uh, you know, it's. There's always those chodes, but what sucks about the millennials is like in those older, uh, the baby boomers and stuff like that, the chodes to good people ratio was for the good people and it's flip flop for the millennials. Like yeah. there's more chodes and gays and trannies and blah, blah, blah. Like the world's just falling apart, which like we've said, we don't give a shit what you do. Just don't impose it on us and then we'll be friendly. But no, anyway, like th- that brings up a good point. It's like, man, I'm not even at the older end. Of millennials, if it's at 36, 37, I, the last stat I heard was 36 years old. So I'm not even at the older end of it. And I'm embarrassed to be a millennial because I put it this way. Whenever I was looking for my big boy job in San Antonio and doing all of that, it was a big deal that I had a business that I was going to keep. And then I did other stuff. They're like, wow, you work hard. It's like, doesn't everybody work hard? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck no, everybody doesn't work hard. And I don't know. It's just, it's one of those things where, like, you look at the kids these days. Did you find it yet? Yep. So there's a fucking shit ton. Do you, <laughs> do you know what the, do you know what the group was called before the baby boomers? No. The silent. Really? The, the silent. silent generation? They were born... 28 to 45, you got the baby boomers right after World War II, 46 to 64. It's kind of a wide swath. And then you got Generation X, 65 to 80, and then you've got Millennials. That's us. 1981 Fuck. to 1996. So I was right. Pain does not qualify as a Millennial. Uh-huh. It's saying that after Millennials, it's just it's post-Millennial. Really? They're fucking got, they got creative. So they're so shitty, and they've done, they've done so little to impact anything. That we're just gonna call them post millennial. Yeah, uh, we don't know what to call them, uh-huh. and we ran out of letters. Ah, uh, they're all standing behind David Hogg. <laughs> <laughs> My fist is in the air, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Heil Hitler, pretty much. I want to know why they called them the Silent Generation. I don't know. They did everything right. Uh, That's where all the serial no. killers came from. Wasn't that? When was the Depression? That that time. 
That's why they were silent. The motherfuckers were too hungry to talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, like, what, like Emmett, you're 25? Yes, sir. All right, so 25 years old. I'm 31, about to be 32. He's 30. We're pretty close in age, but there is a gap. And I see things like when I'm talking to you and Luke and shit like that, and it's mainly technological changes that have changed. And, like, the one thing I give y'all shit about, and it's, like I've said, it's because I'm jealous. You have <laughs> Tinder and things like that, all these dating apps and shit. Do you, do you being the younger of us, do you think that shit, uh, the 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 degradation of the of the society has to do a lot with maybe social media, uh, technology, things like that? Oh, absolutely. You know, you give us a lot of a lot of grief over Tinder and and Bumble it's because I'm jealous. Tinder. I already told you. Yeah, but what <laughs> a lot of a lot of people don't really realize is that trying to date in the year of 2018 is absolutely horrid. Well, because not you, just the men can't talk to girls. If you're a guy that can talk to girls, the girls can't talk to guys. Oh, I, absolutely. So it, it's it's a really odd thing this day and age to go up in a bar and sit down and buy somebody a drink, have a half intelligent conversation with them, yeah, and try and get their number or give them your number or try and link up, you sure. know, a day or two later for coffee or whatever. It's well, if you're yeah. asking for coffee, you're already fucking... She's not, ta- she's not taking you serious if you're asking her out for coffee. <laughs> it's going to stay dry. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. I just looked it up. You can go on with your... Which, which you were, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I could feel somebody like, no, God damn it, they don't call them post-millennials. Generation Z is after millennials. Really? Okay. They actually... The, the name for millennials is gen- Generation Y. Oh, so we're Y. We're Y. There was X before us. Our parents were X. Why? Okay. Then, okay. Now what are they going to do? They got do? creative there. I guess yeah. they're going to go to Roman numerals next. Yeah. So anyway, tell me how hard it is to pick up a girl today. Because <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, you just, you just got to make sure they're really yeah, drunk. Andy, Andy's been with his wife. How long have y'all been together? Like, you've been, been married. To... Sweet. Oh fuck. Okay. How long have y'all been together total? Let's just fourteen skip that. years. There you we go. did the math the other day. She uh she she was doing the math and she was like, we've been together fourteen years and my wife's two years younger than me, so she's only twenty eight. Oh so y'all started dating when you were 16, right? Holy yeah. hell, did you, were y'all like writing letters back and forth? Oh, yeah, dude, yeah, because like, we didn't have text. That was another thing. Um, I have a problem when people say, when they say that I'm a millennial because I think of a millennial of, as somebody that only knows the technology that we have today. Inter- I still internet, know, shit like, like that. You got the little grates at the top of your locker. You got to shove the note in at the top. Yep. And uh-huh. then it's, it's there. Like when she opens the locker, that'll get you laid. Uh, I know you don't do that now never, with Tinder. Never worked for me. Well, it didn't work for me either, but I knew some guys that did it, <laughs> and they they swear by it. Dude, okay. pe- people look at me weird if I'm shoving notes in the yeah. top of lockers yeah, in school. Yeah, you got text message. Yeah, yeah, I bet they do. Look at this caveman. <laughs> <laughs> is he retarded? <laughs> He's 25. Why is he in the high school? <laughs> uh, but yeah. So he went f- to play basketball. <laughs> 14 years, and I was like, God, you're, you've been with me for half of your life. That's crazy. But we got married in 2011. I just did the math in my head. Uh, oh, I can so just seven, out the year. seven years? Yep, October. Shit. I'm oh, get more stop, stop. October 8th, 2011. <laughs> stop, stop it. <laughs> That's why, Caitlin, when I, we set a date, I was like December 1st, because it was 2012. 12 on 12. I remember that all the time. 12 on 12. 12 on 12. Got 12 it. 12 on 12. 12 on 12. 12 on 12. <laughs> that's all you got to say. You got it. Hey, that's a heads up for you when you find the right monster lady. Program that shit. And what's bad the is like there's, July, baby. Yeah. <laughs> there's so many dates. Like our our first son, uh, Reese, was born ten twenty five. So it's like shit. That's another day I got to remember in October. We got married ten eight. Her birthday's nine twenty four. Mine's nine twenty six. It's just like everything. You got just no starts. patterns. No. See, I'm nothing running together. My wife yeah, is four September and October. <laughs> baby is ten sixteen. Twelve and twelve. That's all I got. Mm. This next one's gonna throw me off. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, okay, we're getting we're getting down so. daddy daycare route here. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it is actually being a dad is I, I'm gonna do one on that in the future. I may have you on for that too. Being a dad, being a being a good dad, that's tough. Being a good dad, not just I, actually I should say not being a father, being, right, a, being dad. a dad, being somebody that your kids excited to see. Yes, it's tough, especially in today's age. Uh, with I with you know you can set that iPad up to be a babysitter. And uh, one of the perks of my job, being a goose hunter, which we have not talked about at all. Yeah, we did. We started with that. A little bit at the beginning. Um, 
one of the perks is the guys with money are all older guys. Okay. Yep. You're not you don't see many 25 year olds hunting. No. So you get to look back on on how their parents raised them. And you know, we call the baby boomers you know, they are a uh, uh you know, come from the greatest generation and we get to see how their parents raised them. Night and fucking day difference. Oh, for sure. I they mean, were harder on them for one. I mean, me and your mom, we're going to have dinner. Me and your mom are going to talk. If you say anything that's out of line, I'm going to smack the shit out of you. Yep. And guess what? You didn't. You didn't say anything out of line. You waited. You were respectful. Uh, you waited for your turn to talk. But, you know, it's are just. Are you my new stepdaddy? Yeah. <laughs> beat the shit out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to smack you around, boy. <laughs> make you a man. But that's how you, you know, none of those guys, you didn't even have the snowflake term no, uh, until no. two or three years ago. And well, now it was, it was too rare. Got. It was too rare for yeah, a man to be. You didn't see a that. whole lot of pussies. You know, there weren't. I did. There weren't. No, I didn't. There weren't. Uh, you, parents weren't having to get court orders to get their 30 year old out of their basement. Right, right. Wow. In 1960. Fucking yeah. 18 years old. I'm going to join the Navy because it's better living under this tyrant's. Yeah. Because if he tells me to get on and I don't, he's going to beat the fuck out of me with a water hose. Yeah. Or whatever he can get his hands on. Which, and I think that's another thing, like, that's it's even worse and more prevalent today than when it started to change. Here's what I think happened. This is my philosophy. And this has nothing to do with goose, goose hunting still. <laughs> but That's all right. We're, we're way past goose hunting. Now. Oh, yeah. We're and into man I, shit now. I, we're beating our kids. Well, my God, man, we're popping goose well, lattes. You, you straighten up. I, I was going <laughs> to ask you about goose hunting, but. I heard that your information was subpar. It's subpar. <laughs> Entertaining as hell. It's pretentious. <laughs> it's pretentious as well. Yeah. I mean, so, just saying that it's pretentious is a little fucking here's, pretentious. Here's my philosophy on what happened. And it may be right, it may be wrong, but I think it makes a lot of sense. Is that that greatest generation, were they were hard as hell on their kids. Because right. they went through a lot of shit. That they mm-hmm. knew their kids could never fathom, sure. but they were preparing their kids for that. Yep. Those parents hated that. They mm-hmm. loathed how hard their childhoods were. Sure. And they vowed to make sure that their children's childhoods would be better. nothing like theirs. It's going to be better and easier. Yep. Every parent's dream. And then their children did the same, they did the same thing with theirs. Which would so, be our parents. Yes, which it's compounding. Mm-hmm. And my parents... I didn't get away with much at all, right. but my parents never beat me with a, a strap of leather or anything no. like that. I got my ass whipped. I wasn't picking a switch. No, no. There was nothing like those kids had right. to do. Right. And I think that's what's happened is this is snowballing. So right. what's happening now is there is a segment of our generation that's raising our kids mm-hmm. to where we we look at our generation and say, we do not want our kids to be like these people, sure. so we're harder on them. Yep. So it's reversing, which is great, but there's still the segment that is wanting it to be even easier, and that's the that's the iPad in the face, uh, no spankings, sure. uh, you know, just quiet time. And if they don't be quiet, then then they just didn't. And those are the fucking asshole kids. That everybody wants to beat the shit out of themselves in stores, mm-hmm. and there's nothing you can do about it because everybody's got a goddamn cell phone with a camera on it. So I, I know when we go out to the store, and we were talking about this yesterday, when when we go to the store with our kid, I don't beat my kid by any means, but I, I at times we'll give an appropriate swat, and it's normally through a freaking diaper, so it's not bad. Pretty padded. It's pretty padded. It doesn't leave any sort of color change on the skin, none of that shit. But it's enough to say, hey, you're doing something wrong, right. stop it. it. gets their attention. If you do that shit in the public, yep. you are literally at risk of having the CPS called on you and having to fight to keep your children this sure. day and age, which is complete bullshit. That's the same thing as that the police have to deal with now, mm-hmm. trying to do their jobs. Everybody's got their cell phones out. Yep. And if they slip up one time, even if the person is completely guilty, they're liable to get off with no charges. And it's... That's how fucked up our shit is. Anyway, I, I told my parents one time that I'd I'd call CPS on them, and they looked at me <laughs> and number? said that they looked at me and said that they'd donate me to CPS. <laughs> at that point, it's like check. Yeah, <laughs> yep. that you, didn't work. You know, and I I think that, and then I got uh, beat more. <laughs> <laughs> I think the rubber band is gonna snap back because I'm the same way as you. Uh, I see the the just the fucking 
pussy ass, it's disgusting. Bitch ass it's that, disgusting. That, that our our parents, I mean, not our parents, but our generation of parents put out, and they're just fucking weak, and they don't have a pair. Nope. I, and they're they're shitty fucking parents, and I see that, and I look at my two sons. I just had a second one in July, and I think and he beats the shit out of him already. <laughs> you're gonna learn quickly. You're gonna learn today. No, smack them where they think. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right in the brain maker. Uh, same as Eric, I will give a spanking, but you're it's not it's not gonna leave. It's a not color a beating. Change. It's not a beating. It's an appropriate listen, motherfucker. Yeah, because they don't listen. No, the uh, but anyway. I think that uh, because of what I see with kids today, I'm much harder on my son, who's three and a half, than I probably have to be. But I don't want him to grow up. The other day. Think, think, I'm going to cut you off just a second, and I'll let you continue with the other day. But think about it. Like At this point, like when you were growing up and you had those friends that could do whatever they want, stay out as long as they want, sure. watch whatever they want, all of that, that sucked at that time. But I am so grateful now that it was like that. And I think that's the only reason guys like us get along. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cuz those little motherfuckers get to do whatever they want and now they're they're out there and and they're they, like floating in nothingness. They right. they had a kid at 16 in high school. Exactly. Yeah. Um anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Um I didn't have a kid at 16 in high school, but we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. Come on, what did yeah. I just <laughs> no. get into? Once you open Pandora's box, you can't close it. <laughs> I was way fucking old whenever I had my first kid. But the other day, my three my three year old son, I got onto him about something, and he said, "Dad, why don't you like me?" And that fucking pissed me off. Number one, <laughs> I'm like, "Listen, it's not my job. It's not my job. <laughs> no, you've got grandparents that you're, like you. You're a parent first and a friend second. Yeah, I I love you. It obviously I'm obligated to love you, but I love you and I will do anything for you. But it's not my fucking job to like you. It's my job." To make sure that when you get out of my house in 14 and a half years, you can make something of yourself. Yep. I and be a productive member of society. And, and be something. Just have a fucking pair. Okay? I don't, you know, whatever. You're not going to steal. You're not going to lie. You're going to have a pair. You're going to own it. Whenever you screw up, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, the other day, some high school kids are playing cops and robbers. What cops and robbers is, is a small town version of hide and go seek. Only you get the whole town to play with. Oh, yeah. I've never heard of this. It, that, really? sounds, that sounds fun. Oh. It came out after you. we were already gone God whenever Cops and Robbers. So basically what it is is everybody, sounds- everybody gathers at the football field and they pick teams. You're either a copper or you're a robber. And everybody goes off in their separate ways. So my parents, uh, they live on the edge of Knox City. And um, they notice a, a truck that they've never seen before. And my my parents have a field that's got like water tower, radio antenna, and, sh- and shit like that. It's in a it. good spot for fireworks. Yeah, great spot for fireworks. And anyway, this truck pulls off in it, and you know everybody in town, and you know where people are supposed to be and when they're not supposed to be. So Jeff, my dad, is like, "What the fuck is this guy doing?" You know, number one, he thinks of a drunk driver. Yeah. So he calls the cops. Because he's the judge. He's the judge in town. <laughs> Not fun. He has to recuse himself if any of us go to jail. But that's a side note. Um, <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Not getting off. Hey, here. Emmett, don't get arrested in Knox City. Oh, <laughs> uh, you'll be good. If it's Eric, he's got to recuse himself. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, so this truck goes off into this field. And Jeff's like, you know, nobody's supposed to be out there. Truck's got a tail light out. That's an easy. If it's a drunk driver, he's fucked because the cop's gonna get him for a busted tail. Yeah, he has he has cause. He has cause to pull him over. So, cop comes. Cop pulls him over for the busted headlight. Goes up to the window. It's, he he. Uh, now, as the cop pulls him over, my dad sees two people walk across his yard, which is another big no no in Texas. Oh yeah, you get your uh, ass shot. Walks across his yard. But as this truck is in the field next to the, to the house, my mom and dad go out to the porch to see what's going on. And then that, and that's when they see the, the two people walking across the yard. And he says, hey, who, who are you? Come over here. And he's thinking that they're grown men. Puts a light on them. They're two high school kids. Oh, hell. So uh, he says, what, what, what are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? And, and the, the kid says, oh, we're playing cops and robbers. And he, Jeff's like, yeah, you gotta, you need to tell people. Number one, you can't just go walking oh. through people's yards. You need to at least tell the cops or somebody. That way we know that, uh, you know, y'all are playing a game. And he calls the cop back and says, hey, listen, it's no big deal. It's just a bunch of high school kids playing cops and robbers. And they said that's who the truck is. Yeah. 
And the cop says, well, yeah, it's too late. He said, I've got them pulled over. Um, Jeff says, you know, don't give them a ticket. We've never given them tickets before. They're just high school kids having some fun. So as this kid, as, as Jeff is talking to this kid in his front yard, uh, this kid's phone rings. And he said, what, what did he, he answered the phone, puts him mm-hmm. on speakerphone. And it was the kid that got pulled over by the cop. And uh, he said, yeah, that bitch Michelle is the one that called the cops. Michelle is my mother. He does not know that he is on speakerphone by his buddy. Wait, uh, the high school kid said that? Yes. So the, <laughs> row, row. the high school, the, the, the two high school kids that my dad is talking to is still in the yard. And they're just kind of talking. You know, it's, it's no big deal once they find out what it is. And the guy that got the kid that got pulled over by the cop calls the kid that's in Jeff's yard. The kid that's in Jeff's yard puts him on speakerphone and 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 says, "Hey, uh, I saw you got pulled over." Blah blah blah. He's and on speakerphone he says, "Yeah, that bitch Michelle is the one that called us in." And my mom <laughs> and my dad are standing right there. My mom is the Michelle that he is referring yeah, to as, as the bitch. And uh, mom says, "You know I can hear every word that you're saying." And the line goes dead. <laughs> okay yeah that'll scare any kid so i told you that story to tell you this story um the way i would have handled it and the way it would have been handled if i had been the one that said yeah that bitch so-and-so is the one that called us in and she had heard it i'd be going to that bitch's house to knock on the fucking door and, and say you're sorry and say i'm sorry yeah. yeah or you wouldn't have fucking said it in the first place right i might have <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have speakerphone back but you know how this you know how this certain situation got handled? How? The kid's mother text my mother and said, I'm sorry. I'm very, very and, and the kid had no it. no tie to no it. repercussions. Nothing. No, that's Nothing. fucking fucking the other day. So across from my house I own a whole lot that's just an open grassy area, and then we have a creek, which is the city's drainage. And there were these uh two kids out there, and I sat there and watched them, and I'd had a few to drink. So I was a little bit easier triggered than normal. But I just sat out there and watched them. And they were chasing, you know, we have these ducks down here. Which I don't give a shit about the ducks. They walk across the street too slow and make me have to slow down. And it kind of makes me mad. But they're chasing these ducks around. And I'm like, yeah, that's something I would have done as a kid. Whatever. Sure. And I watch them. And then the duck runs into these bushes. And it's hiding. Mm -hmm. And then every time it tries to get out, they go to the other side. Mm -hmm. And and I'm going to shorten it. it. It lasted about 15 minutes. I just stood there and watched. Right. And finally, they start picking up rocks and pegging the shit out of this duck. They're trying to kill it. There's no doubt they were trying to kill the duck. That's a no-go. Future duck hunters. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Rock duck. Even I I don't have the... Caveman ducks. Yeah. So I just... I walk out to my fence out there by the lot, and I just watch a little longer, let them throw a few more uh, rocks, and I go... Actually, it was three kids. I'm sorry, it wasn't two. And these kids are like, maybe fifth grade mm-hmm. and i went uh, i went hey leave that duck alone and this kid looks over at me fifth grader probably and goes what we weren't hurting him and, fucking rocks oh at him. i lost my shit, shit. i went i watched you for 15 fucking minutes throw fucking rocks at that duck like screaming at this kid and then they yeah. walked with their heads down back to wherever the fuck they came from yeah. but it's like i we would have never done that to a strange adult no. A strange no. adult, you... No. Even if you were right and they were wrong, that's just... That's the difference in never having your ass whooped and having your ass whooped. You just take your... You walk off with your head between your legs and yeah. go find another duck to throw shit at that nobody's watching. What What do you <laughs> see in your age group? Like, like uh, your peers of the 25-year-old span. I mean, obviously, I feel like we're all the definition of an exception to the rule, I th- which I th- is I th- sad. But we, you also got to look at where we were raised. That's yeah, true. Small I, town's a big part of it because Canadian's absolutely. a tiny town too. It's tiny. I actually want to double back to the cops and robbers thing. True. That was a huge thing in our hometown. And it was, I think for us, it was like Sunday night. And yep. I, I thought forever it was like yep. we were the only people that played that game. And I'd forgot about it for a long so time. So like how many people would turn out to play However this? Many, like whoever wants Everybody to in the high school. Yeah. It's just like a big, every, yep. like. So Zach, you, didn't, dude, you didn't want to be the fat kid then. Zach, well, <laughs> I never played it. Zach, who is 20, he'd be 25. Yeah. He played uh-huh. it in high school. So, uh, yeah, it passed us. I and, don't know. You'd have to lay out the rules. And what, 
how it works is you'd start at one in the town and somebody'd scream go and everybody has to try and get to the other end of town. So like we'd start at the, the football field and then somebody'd say go and everybody would try and make it to the Methodist church, which is like a mile and a half, two miles away. Eh, probably not, but felt like for, it. Yeah, it felt like it. <laughs> and running. and you'd yeah. have like three, three or four people in vehicles driving around right. and of course you know it's a small town in texas everybody's got a spotlight yep. so you're just spotlighting people and if you spotlight them you caught them you caught them you they gotta get in the vehicle or so they're trying to stealthily move yep and you have a vehicle and they're on foot oh yeah oh, oh yeah. okay that Dude, makes sense i yeah. tell you this kid named john haley who was a country boy also lived right across the river from from where i grew up he and I teamed up, and from like every weekend on, dude, we were like Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> it, he, he was driving the, the yellow Xterra, and I was hanging out the window at the spotlight. Dude, we had so many people packed in an Xterra at one point. Like, if we would have got pulled over, they would have, they probably would have. Were, were they in there because they were also cops, or were they people they were you right. caught? They were, people we caught. Oh, they get in the back. yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Dude, I mean, you had people like hiding in dumpsters, crawling in the backyards. Yeah. I mean, it it's was crazy. It was like really right from they the They did this, and I hid at the one computer centrally located in our house and waited 15 <laughs> minutes for a pair of boobies to load up that may <laughs> that may or not may or may not be quality. <laughs> and, and if they're not, you've got 15 more minutes to wait on your next dice roll. And a hundred percent, like it's gonna at some point the loading is gonna stop at either depending on how it loads, either the belly button or the neck, and yep. that's all you're gonna see yep. for for. And then you gotta go twelve and a half minutes. Is, you're just gonna see this lady's nice neck, and you're like, son of a bitch. Hey, this is this is a funny story. All the while, you know your dad's about to come in and tell you get the fuck off the computer. So. Boom. That's a, that's a perfect. God damn it, hurts. That's a, that's a perfect little uh, intro to to my one of my most embarrassing moments of the sixth grade. Uh, my parents were gone to like this church deal <laughs> and I went back on the old gateway computer. You remember those? Oh yeah. Netscape. And yeah, it was on Netscape. I did my dial up, got it loaded up. I was going to look at some nudie pics. This was before I was educated on what a search history was. Yeah. Got to clear it. Apparently, ah. apparently my parents learned didn't the hard know way. what it was. Yeah, I did learn the hard way. So they come in and I had the doors locked and, um, like, I think they didn't have a key to the deadbolt. And I knew that, so I had it locked to where I could run up there and have enough time to close the screen. And I was trying to load up some dirty pictures, <laughs> and they get back <laughs> before I was ready because I was probably sitting there for 15 minutes waiting yeah. on a pair of tits to load up. Yeah. And I, I ran and unlocked the door. I wasn't whacking it, thank God, because that would have been even worse. And the first thing my mom and dad – or no, my mom went back to the computer and looked at the history, history, and that was before I knew that existed – Man, I got in big trouble. And that, and that funny? Then I learned how to clear a history, and I just went right back to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They had Google Chrome by the time I was old enough to look at porn. Really? Oh, yeah. Holy uh, shit. It may, it may have came out like several years after. Yeah, but, but you think about like- Incognito, baby. I, I feel like technology slowed down a lot. I mean, it's still it's still changing so fast. Like, just, right. look, just look at iPhones, how they change by generation. But yeah. there was that span, man, right from, from the phase of- dial up and when it transitioned into broadband dude like i feel like shit was on high octane because you, you look at the way things change everything was getting smaller at such a rampant rate and now things are so fucking small it's like ah, we can't fit it in there anymore so so now everything's getting bigger let's get rid of the headphone port <laughs> and yeah everything's getting bigger again let's just go let's go thin with a big screen isn't that funny how our parents generation whenever they're raising us with computers in the house, they they limit us to an hour on the computer a day. Yep. And they go, oh, you you can't spend any more time than that. It's gonna hurt now, your eyes. Yeah. Now, now who are they call on to fix their internet? Their us. computer. <laughs> You're welcome, parents. Yeah. Not only that, but they're on Facebook and shit now too. So they've. Mine aren't. It's great. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky. Facebook needs an age requirement. Well, it used to, man. When I went to my, this is gonna age me. When I went to my uh, college orientation at Midwestern, there was this beautiful brunette woman. She was probably a junior or senior in college. So she was just like <coughs> leaps and bounds beyond a high school girl that I was used to. And I'm sitting there, Mr. Country, 
like signing up. She's helping me sign up my classes, and she's like, "Hey, are you on this? Are you on uh, Facebook or MySpace?" I was like, "MySpace? What's Facebook? Oh, it's this thing for only college students. You have to have a college email address to get on it, and." You know, you get on there and it's like we can chat and all that. And I'm like, fuck yeah. yeah, I'm signing up for that right now. Can you help me? And she helped me sign up with it with my. Co- you had to have an email address from a registered college. Not all colleges would even let you join. So Facebook was brand fucking new yeah. when I started college. She's probably getting paid by Mark Zuckerberg. No, nah, sure. she probably was blowing. No, he's too weird. He's a robot. Have you? Seen- <laughs> Have, have you seen when they talk, uh, I think it's Joe Rogan talks shit about him, how he was drinking water in the hearings. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> you, you, y'all will have to look at that on your own. I'm not going to go down that trail, but he, they, they're making fun of Sipping him like, like he's an alien. Like, okay, I need to look normal. Yeah. So I'm going to take this water. Okay, sip it again. <laughs> sip it one more time. <laughs> it's pretty funny, but no. He is a weird motherfucker, but he's worth a lot of money. So I got on the wrong. He was a good thief. I got on the wrong. Uh, I put all my eggs in the MySpace basket. I did too. We had uh, we had a guide. You could put music on that yeah. shit. Oh, yeah, it was, you could change your wallpaper. Yeah, it was Total awesome. Custom. And if you were good at it, you looked like a baller. Yeah. There, there's a tweet out there the other day talking did about the music MySpace? thing. Did you MySpace? Yes, I did. Oh shit! There, Where's there's that a, old? There was a tweet out there the other day that said. I wish you could link music to your Twitter so that whenever people clicked on your page, they started playing so they could see what you're about. It was like, sure. we have officially reached the generation that does not know what MySpace <laughs> is. <laughs> hashtag MySpace. So, yeah. Sorry hashtag, to interrupt, Andy. Ha- no, hashtag no, 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 Tom. Good, yeah. But uh, we, we <laughs> your had- Your first friend on MySpace every single yeah, time. Every time. <laughs> we had a guide and same as you. Of course, this was a male guide, but he was like, uh, hey- I'm a male. No, y- your introduction to Facebook was some hot brunette. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine was a dude that worked for us. So oh. he was like, hey, have you heard of Facebook? And I'm like, listen, Facebook fucking sucks. <laughs> MySpace is where it's at. MySpace? If you don't have a MySpace, you're a fucking loser. Yeah. <laughs> okay? You get on MySpace tomorrow. <laughs> Joe Dierte. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I drug Nobody my- Nobody wants you around, dirt. I drug my feet to the Facebook game and then- Sure as shit. Like yeah. three years later, Facebook buys MySpace and no more. Yeah. But and, and now it's publicly traded and I needs if, to be federally regulated almost. Are it's our so MySpace big. accounts still good if we know the password? I would love that's what I might do when I go home. For for one thing, log in and if just you see still all remember shit, that fucking password. I don't, okay, I don't either. Hundred percent I don't. I could guess because most of my passwords are two or three things. I don't know what mine would have been back then. But like that would be because like it's just one of those things where you just quit logging in. That yeah. was before it was on your cell phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, So you had and, to go to a laptop. And you, and you couldn't save your password. Yeah. Back then. Yeah. So it would be interesting to go back to my face, my oh, MySpace. The only cookies they had then were chocolate chip, bro. <laughs> <laughs> go back to my MySpace and see like what some of the last notifications were. Oh, it'd be I weird. Oh, it would be weird. It'd be a fucking time warp. Yeah, like senior high school pretty yeah. much. 2008 was what it was. Dude, 2007 yeah. is what oh, you would oh, MySpace and Facebook did what the FBI has been trying to do for like 70 no years. Shit. <laughs> no <laughs> shit. Dude, the FBI could go to Zuckerberg and be like, look, we're going to give you a trillion dollars. Just give us a just a straight back, back door, mm-hmm. which well, I think they've actually tried to do. I don't know. Well, we're not going to go down that road. But they could do that, and it would be like, all right, we're going to cancel all of our surveillance programs. We know exactly what the fuck and where the fuck everybody is right now. (laughs) You know what pisses me off is for the San Bernardino, this doesn't have anything to do with Facebook, but it has to do with Apple, which I'm currently looking at right now, an Apple product. Always. They wouldn't give uh, the login. For the yep. San Bernardino people. Yep, yep. But one of Trump's guys gets in a little bit of hot water, and they're like, oh, fuck it. And that shit over. Here it is. Yep. Get what you need. That That is one big negative to all of the uh, tech giants right now. Oh, right now. Period. Ever. Because they're, they're all the Silicon Valley shit. Sure. They're so heavily liberal, and it's, I don't know, it's, it's one of those things where we're just at a, we're at a, at a, dis, at a, Good God, I can't talk. At a disadvantage all Use the your time. Words, One, two, Use your three, words. four. Four. I'm still good. I just four couldn't. Years. I just. Yeah, I, they, those, I, they slip. I got a uh, texture on my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, you know, they're all that way. And that's why, you know, like this shit with Alex Jones, which 
I don't, I think we're all, I don't know. Emmett's probably the most, um, non extreme conservative at this table. And he's still in society's terms an extreme, but you and I are pretty much on the same page Mm -hmm. and he just has a little more reason sometimes. Um, but you know, you look at like Alex Jones, I think he's fucking way far right. right. Yep. Way right. Some of the shit he says is pretty good. Some of it's like, dude, you're grasping at straws. But the when they when they kicked him off, the fact that it was such a simultaneous group effort from uh everybody basically on the web that's socially oriented except for Twitter, that says something. Mm-hmm. The fact that those guys can all band together and do it at the same time in the middle of the night. Right. That says something. Yeah. And there's there's not as much controversy about that as there should be, which for Alex Jones, I think we can all agree it's probably going to make his career that they did that because sure. now everybody's going to have to go to pay to play site to hear mm-hmm. his shit. And now there's going to be not only his loyal followers, but the ones that were kind of by curious about him. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be like, holy shit, if it's so bad, they banned him from all social media. It must be some pretty crazy <laughs> shit they're trying to hide. Let's <laughs> jump on. Yeah. And then all the extreme... Uh, conspiracy theory guys are going to be like he was right they're trying to silence him you know and then it's going to go to that and anyway that's that's neither here nor there but it is kind of crazy that we live in a world where there are platforms that are so powerful and they're still privately owned yeah. essentially I mean oh. I know they're publicly traded but they're not they're not regulated which is probably a good thing because if the government stepped in it'd get even worse Yeah, unless Trump was the the main guy <laughs> i'm telling you he's got a checklist on his desk that he looks at every day and he's like hmm, okay i've got yep. rid of nafta now what's next yep i'm ready to see how that goes and, and there are things like i will say this people think that guys like us that are all big trump supporters and and fanboys and things like that that oh you just like him because he's he's making your life better and blah 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 guess what i'm doing a lot of construction on my life or <laughs> I'm doing a lot of construction on my house and everything around it in my life. Pretty much everything in my life is under construction right now. He's rebuilding everything. I'm building a baby inside my wife right now. There's all kinds of shit. Oh, dangerous man. I live on... Uh, that's my Terrible. middle name. build a baby in you. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. Just give me a screwdriver and a paper clip. <laughs> but, a little, a little but, bit of silly putty. No, like these things that I'm doing, like uh, we framed up the back patio, uh, my dad and I, and we went and bought all the material. It's gone up 40% since he, was, his, since he started all his stuff. Yep. So that negatively impacts me. Sure. Now, I'm having to spend more money. My uh, The AC unit we had installed in the in the office building today. It went up by four hundred dollars just because of the the things he's putting on value added taxes. So there are things that are hurting me. But as a business owner, and you guys doing the same thing, you work ten ninety nine. Your business right. owners, he's passed tax laws that help us and encourage us to grow rather than right. rather than settle uh, because of uh, you know being penalized basically from right. taxation. So. I just don't know how anybody can argue it. Like the employment, uh, unemployment rates are at all time lows, setting records and everywhere. Dude, the, the guy Stock could market. cure cancer and oh, they'd be pissed. Oh, about fuck it. yeah. He, he could literally say, look, I have had this in my pocket until I got nominated president of the United States. Here you go. No one's ever going to die from cancer again. Right. And they'd be like, they'd be pissed. He's about been holding that for all this time. Or they'd be pissed about all the doctors that he just put out. Of yeah. Business. Oh, you oh. just, you just killed the big pharmaceutical. pharmaceutical. And right. it's oh. like, yeah. You were just fucking picketing just against about. Big Pharma. But anyway, that's... You know, and uh, I mean, it It just... You got to kind of pick which side you're on. You know, we're happy that uh, steel is coming back to the United Absolutely. States. Absolutely. It's, it's that employing all those people. are coming back to uh, Detroit. Ford just... Uh, before he got elected, I think they announced that they were going to start up back in Detroit. You got to pick, and, and they were they abandoned like a multi, sure. like a billion dollar facility in Mexico or some sure. shit. Yeah. It may have been less money than that, but it was gigantic, and they straight up stopped midway through construction back to the U.S. So you're going to have to pick which side. You know, do we want things built in America? Is that what side we're on, or do we want cheap shit? Right. Yeah. So because there are you because, can't you can't have both. You can't have your you, cake and eat it. You too. can't have five dollars. People aren't going to work for two and two dollars no. and fifty cents in no. a pair of Nikes. No, here in America. Yep. If like you want American made shoes, you better get ready to pay two or three hundred dollars a pair. Sure, that's all there is to it. You, but you can't. It just it, it just employed how many people? Right. So there's there's perks and and 
uh, you know, cost. You know, the, the funny part you're talking about having cheap shit or everybody having a job. You know, I'm, I'm from way up in the top of the panhandle where oil is a very, very big thing and has been. For, how much do you have? How much oil? I've got like six quarts in my car, man. That's, that's, about, <laughs> that's about what I've got. <laughs> I think mine's a little low. I think I got four. So. <laughs> Y'all are richer than me. Yeah. But everybody at one point was working for the oil companies up there. And, you know, there's a Facebook, back to the Facebook thing. There's a Facebook group called Rant Rave Hemp Hill County. Mm-hmm. And is that what County Canadian is? Yep. Hemp Hill. Hemp Hill. Hemp Hill. Hemp Hill. So. Make your jokes. Make your jokes. <laughs> I know where all there's, the weed's going to start when it legalizes. <laughs> right? Up on the hill. <laughs> there's another story about that, about Canadian. We'll have to get into that later. But back to the oil and gas thing, there's this Facebook page called Rant and Rave Hemp Hill County. And at least once a week here, probably three years ago when the oil boom was very prevalent, people would get on there and they'd be bitching about how high gas prices were. Yep. Oh, well, you know, in Pampa, which is one of the next towns over, it's 25 cents cheaper. Why yep. are we paying this much, this much? Well, then oil takes a shit sure. because Saudi flooded the market with cheap oil. Yep. Well, right. everybody lost their jobs, but damn it, we got cheap gas. Yeah, no one can afford uh, it. So. And it was all I could do not to just like get on there and be like, hey, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if anybody has a job, but how about this cheap gas? Yeah, because yeah. so that's, that's the same thing. And I think that's what's happening in a lot of the uh, politics is these politicians, they're not fucking stupid. They do stupid shit, but they're not stupid. And they appeal to people's individual wants. And I think that's a big problem with what's happened to society in terms of uh, political uh, agendas is that nothing is based on the betterment of society. Everything is what benefits me. Right. So a politician will look at just because we don't like them, let's talk about Democratic Party. Sorry, Democrats. Their, their, their biggest voter populace is, is fucking illegals vote, and that's bullshit. Well, that's what they're wanting. Yes, but guess what? They're easy to turn because they're like, we're going to give you this, we're going to give you this, sure. we're going to give you this. So all of those people say, man, that is going to benefit me and my direct family so much. Yes, I'm voting for them. But nobody thinks like, man, that is going to hurt society. That's going to hurt our economy. That's going to hurt us as a whole mm-hmm. and of course and i'm just, not all republicans think that way either yeah. i mean we're not we're not much better than them but quite a bit still <laughs> <laughs> but you know you look at it and it's it's one of those things where when i voted for trump i didn't think i'm voting for trump because hillary's gonna take my guns i, I was like man she's gonna run this country into the freaking ground and i'm self-employed i have a family to take care of and I know like pretty much all of my friends are dependent on things going well for the economy. At the time when he got elected, I think the uh, Dow Jones was around 16K. And the night before, when they found out he was going to get elected, the, uh, the pre-open prices dropped into the 15s because I had some money in the stock market. And I really thought Hillary Clinton was going to win. I hoped Trump was going to win. I went to bed. I didn't even like... I stayed up till three. You bro, and I were texting. texting bro, I was another. in San Antonio... Where there were a lot of Hillary voters, like lots of bumper stickers. There weren't many Trump stickers that didn't have key scratches down the side. So I didn't get on that train. Yeah. So I stayed up till 3 a.m. I had work the next day. And I I was so confident that Hillary was going to win. I invested in three different um, firearms companies. I inver- mm-hmm. uh, invested in Ruger and Sturm. Uh, I think that's how you say it, uh, which is, you know, Ruger Firearms yeah. and... Uh, I can't remember. I don't think it's Winchester, but there's a company that owns them. I think it starts with a O. Somebody looked that up and messaged to me how stupid I am. I don't care. And then there was another one, uh, maybe like Colt or I don't I don't know what it was. It's been too long. But I put it in there because I was so sure she was going to win. I was like, fuck it. At least I'm going to make some money off this deal. Yeah. Put them in there. And when Trump won, one of them made me a little money. And I lost 500 on the other one within like 10 seconds of the market opening. <laughs> but when you looked at the pre-open prices, the market had plummeted like 1,500 points or some shit. Uh, it, or, uh, you know, it, it had gone down from 16 something to 15. I'm not an investor, so I don't know the terms. If you are, shut up. But um, no, I did that. And I was that was how confident I was she was going to win. Not because she was the proper candidate. She's, they couldn't have picked a worse candidate. But oh, it's just absolutely. because there's such a large portion of the population due to the lack of uh, immigration control. It's like, who the fuck doesn't think it's okay to require an ID to vote? 
You got to have one to drive. And and then these small towns, they make you normally, if they don't know you, they'll ask you. Mm -hmm. But in the cities, they don't give a shit. They do not give a shit. I could have walked in and said, I'm uh, Jimbo Jenkins. And they'd look and like, okay, go vote. No problem. Everybody's losing their mind about immigration right now and what Trump's doing with immigration. And what a lot of people don't realize, I I think this was really funny, was you had the the group of people that were going, oh, well, if Trump gets elected, we're leaving the country. We're going to Canada. (laughs) And they're still here. Which, I mean, you're always going to have that. But the, the even funnier part was the people that were serious about it Looked into trying to go to Canada. Looked into trying to go yeah, somewhere and else. And I was like, like, "Fuck, this is gonna take like two uh, years." The, they realized, like, "Oh, well, they actually have immigration laws they stand by." Yeah. And you know, I lived, I lived in a third world country um, for just under a year ish. Ish. Yeah, it was right around. It was a beautiful year. third world country. Well, on the touristy well, side, it, the French it was Polynesian or. Something like that. Tur- Turks and Caicos. <laughs> Fuck off. But <laughs> heard from- on the, on the, I thought the- you were in R- Rwanda or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. this you were in Zimbabwe. <laughs> you know, this uh, beautiful if you're, beach if you're on the touristy property. side of things, it's, Fuck you know, it, it's touristy. But you start getting <laughs> the local side of shit from time to time. And it's like, holy you might get, fuck. You might run into some good weed or something if you get on the, if you get onto that side. No, of not even that, you know. A good Cuban? A good, good Cuban cigar? Yeah, you could buy Cubans down there. Yeah. But the thing down there was <laughs> is going. they'd have checkpoints set sure, up yeah. on occasion on these islands, mm-hmm. and you had to display you know your passport or your work permit or any of that stuff. And if you didn't have that shit, I had a good buddy who got ejected out of the country mm-hmm. and sent back to Britain because he, he is he the it. one that's coming down. Yeah. Oh, Joe. great. Because, we need to write that shit down and ask him about yeah, it. Yeah, he didn't have. He even shit on him. Well, he didn't have a work permit at the time. It was in the process. But, right. you know, they do that shit. Even in a third world country. Yeah, if you do that shit in the United States, you set up a checkpoint and say, hey, uh, let's just see some legal documentation. <clears throat> People would lose their god. Fuck yeah, mind. they would. And it's like, hey, you are in our country. Like, well, and yeah. sorry. And and now we're, here we go. We've opened a new can of worms. This one's probably going to run yeah, long because of this. But no, it's it's... Man, to me, okay, so I'm not going to disclose much information, but my wife works for a company that's owned by non-American citizens. They came from overseas, not Mexico. They, you don't have they're in a sea between us and Mexico. Yeah, yeah. Huh? There's a border. It's, it's, you just walk. There's <laughs> fucking water around the edges. <laughs> not much, depending on the year. So this is something and and it makes me when when she tells me this stuff it makes me proud about being an american they moved over here and they've grown their company to a multi-million dollar a year company they're thriving everything they do you know they do the same thing that all manufacturers do they they source their shit it all comes from china and stuff like that same stuff but these guys they're they're several brothers and they um it's taken them years to get their u.s citizenship yeah. And when they get it, they send pictures with the judge um, to all the employees. They are so fucking proud to be United States citizens. And I bet That's they know. It should be. Yeah, it's, it should be. Like, you moved here. Like, yeah. they have to go through things. I'm pretty sure. I need to research this. But I'm pretty sure they have to learn certain things about our, our, our history. Yeah, sure. And that's the thing, like. I don't have any objection. Be proud of where you came from because it made you who you are. Absolutely. But if it's so bad you fucking came over here illegally. Don't bring that shit over here. Leave it where well, you left. Yeah. Because the reason you came here is because America is a great country. Yep. And the reason it's a great country is because it's not like your goddamn country. Yep. Period. If yep. you live in one of Trump's shitholes and you come to here and try to make America a shithole, guess what? America's not going to be great anymore. It's going to be a shithole, shithole. just like everywhere else in the fucking world that people are coming here from. It blows my mind that you have these people, you know, say look at the election. You had people protesting in every city he went to. Still fucking protesting. Waving Mexican flags or the flag of their country, and they're going, fuck Trump, you know, go Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. If it's so great... Go right the fuck back. Fuck yeah, you're right. And and there's no cure for that because what they're going to claim is, hey, we're proud of our culture. That's great. Because Rock on. You do you, but you know what? If you go somewhere where there's only white people and we only speak English because that's what we speak in America, 
don't disrespect us and try to talk Spanish. Like that happens to me so much. People will fuck with me when, especially when I was in San Antonio, they'll talk to me in Spanish, and I know a little bit of Spanish, just enough to get me in trouble or sometimes <laughs> out of trouble. If I'm drunk, I know a lot of Spanish. At least I think I do. <laughs> but puta madre. Uh, puta. Put, puta madre is not something Bad you want to call somebody if you're in trouble. <laughs> but it's like just they speak fucking English. That's what yeah. pisses me off, and they won't say they, it. And it's just be it's a courtesy. That's like in Mexico. I try to speak Spanish sure. to people that I know. Yeah, you know they, they say, you know, ¿Cómo estás? I, I try to. I don't say good. How are you doing? Very well. Yeah. They say, oh, you know, muy bien, muy bien, muy, muy, bien. muy bien. Y tú, y, you y know, trying to try to do what Miss Christensen taught us. Sure, y tú. <laughs> but no, anyway, it's it is. It's very frustrating, and I don't know what the cure politically is for it. Uh, I think. I think the funniest thing is that the people that protest the wall are the ones that are here legally. Yeah. A lot. And it's like, shut the fuck up. Build the fucking wall. Guess what? The wall's not going to keep everybody out. It's just going to slow down a free flow of traffic. It's like putting a master lock on something you own. It's not a guarantee that that thing's still going to be there, but it keeps the honest people honest. I saw I a, a really interesting um, video on social media here a little while back. And some people... A group of reporters, one group decided to drive the entire border from like Brownsville. That's smart. Yeah. Brownsville all the way to San Diego. Mm -hmm. And then another group got in a helicopter and flew the border from, I think it was Brownsville, Texas, all the way up to San Diego, California. And both groups at the end of this video, I'll have to see if I can find it and send it to y'all. But they're like, they showed lots of video of them flying along and driving along. And they're like, there's so many places along this thing that, like, you just, you don't know whether you're in Mexico or no. you're in Texas. No. You're just driving or flying along, and you can't tell that there's a, a dividing line. I, I can't remember which highway it is, but it runs through, like, Zapata by Lake Falcon and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's literally less than 10 miles from the border, the whole fucking highway all the way through Laredo and up to El Paso. I mean, it's a well-traveled highway. It's just, I, I I don't know. I don't know the cure for it. I know the wall will help. And I think that they need to have a more expeditious get the fuck out of here program that, when people I, get caught. I honestly think that's that would help a whole lot. The is. thing is, though, like, we are the world's police. Yep. Yeah. And because of that, nobody, it's going to take somebody like Trump that's not as, that, not, he's not as scared. He's not scared to ruffle the, fle the feathers. Okay, he's not scared. He's not scared to ruffle the feathers. If only you looked like Selma Hayek. Yeah, I know. He's not scared to ruffle feathers and piss people off. He didn't give a shit. And I think he's trying to do it because of, because of the deals that he's talking with the Mexican. Is it? Is they call him a president? El Presidente. El Presidente. They've got to get other people on board. Because it's not just our problem that Mexican and uh, Guatemalan and Honduran and all these other uh, Central American and Mexican citizens are illegally crossing, which is not all Mexicans. It's a lot of other Central countries. Central America. Yes. And, and the cartel is capitalizing on that. It's going to take the Mexican government stepping in and helping us. We can't do it by ourselves. We can build a fucking 400-foot wall, uh, high wall that goes 30 feet under the ground, and they're going to still figure out a way to do it through semi-trucks hidden just like they do drugs they'll just traffic humans across the border we can't do it if we're the only ones fucking doing it it's well, just like anything the, you, you can't do it by yourself the reason that i lean so much towards just more of a program of just having say like a road stop and checking people's yeah. shit is because a large majority of illegal immigrants in this country just overstayed their visa yeah they, yep. they came here by plane. dreamers dreamers right. Is that what did they call it? DACA? Uh, wasn't that what it was called? That was the big thing for a little while, and then nobody talks I'm about it anymore. Of, I'm trying to think of what a dreamer. Because dream, they were they were called dreamers, is what they call them now, because it sounds but so I, fucking no, great. I think a dreamer, you were brought over here as a kid. Are you sure? One hundred percent. So DACA was the one that let people stay here on their visas. DACA but, but, was for the dreamers, but a dreamer was like a three-year-old okay. that got brought over here oh, by okay. her parent. But the, but the thing is, they're fully capable at that point to gain their citizenship. Oh, and, and but they put no effort forth to do so. 
they don't want to do it. They just want it given to them. And, and it's almost like a, a, it goes back to the millennial mindset of gimme, gimme. You know, everybody graduating college think they need a hundred thousand dollar job is going to be sitting there waiting for them. I actually heard that there's there's students uh, filing lawsuits against universities because sure. they were promised a, they were promised a job, and there wasn't one waiting for them when they got out of college. Oh, tough shit, right? <laughs> yeah, I, man, you got to work I, for some. I've got my degree, and uh, I'm telling you, I th- I think for the money you I could have spent it way better. Number one, I've got a degree in education to where I could mold young minds yeah you're doing it right now yeah yeah exactly 50 and, year old mind. and I, I'm, I'm i need to look at our demographics <laughs> and i'm a goose guide so you know same thing i could have saved a whole lot of money and a whole lot of time if i would have just see, cut the I, bullshit and see, just and, got started and, and i'll say my point and segue into probably what emmett's gonna say because i'm i've got a kid on the way and a, a child on this earth now. So I'm going to be a parent of at least two and probably accidentally three. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll probably be three fucking girls too. But anyway. Um, I mean, no, they, they can switch later on and become boys. <laughs> it's a choice. It's, it's a, a choice. choice. It's not biological. We won't go down that fucking rabbit hole again. We'll be here all night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. It'll be a 13 hour podcast and everybody, <laughs> everybody will unsubscribe. And probably you'll lose viewers too just because you were here. But, um, or listeners, I got to, I got to get my terminology correct. That's right. I've been doing video too much. Yeah. But, um, no, it's uh, fuck. We talked about it too long. I've lost my segue. But basically, from what you were saying, what'd you say? I don't remember. <laughs> All right, talk about your degree in education oh, and yeah, such. Yeah, yeah. Okay, That's I got. <laughs> thank you, thank you so fuck much. Did we end up at? It's That's the difference in 30, 30 plus year old minds and a twenty year old mind. Yeah, um, you got to keep us on track. Jesus Christ, we got to stop right now. Or I'm going to forget <laughs> again. Fucking <laughs> geriatric here, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Emmy. <laughs> what, what were we talking about? Two, two the three of us can Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Emmett, you just said this. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank God he's here. Uh, no, um, so I'm actually, I chose my degree in uh, business management, and I took a bunch of op- entrepreneurship classes and marketing classes. And the only reason those pay off is because I decided to be a business owner and do like it, it would be the same thing if you'd have got your degree in marketing, mm-hmm. you technically wouldn't be using your degree, but you'd be using be it using promoting it. your, you know, the the outfit and your podcast and everything. But this day and age, what's going to happen? And I, I have a lot of clients that come in and you guys probably do too, that own like large physically demanding companies, like contractors, right. you know, big fucking commercial contractors. We yeah. have one guy, he's, I can't remember his name off the top of my head and I feel bad, uh, but. He probably didn't want to mention on this. Yeah. We've no, he's, all- probably, he's probably not listening to this tomfoolery, <laughs> but. Um, That's not his name, so he, don't go looking it up on Google. I, I want to say he's 58 and he's like 6'4", looks like he, you know, was a, just a, he's just a big man. Right. Like, he look, he's the definition of a manly dude and he, ha- he does brick work. Mm-hmm. He, he's a contractor that does brickwork. And to this day, at 58, he's looking forward to in two more years, he's going to retire because he still every fucking day is out there working with his hands, laying brick. Not his hands, but his helpers, if people mm-hmm. don't speak Texan. That's he's, Texan. Yeah, he's working with his help, his uh, employees. And most of them are illegals because they're the only ones that'll work. But he told me something that was really interesting that I think that not get, it doesn't get talked about much. He said the issue he's running into now is that all his best employees are getting too old to work well. You know, they're in their 60s and they their their time is limited on laying brick just cuz their joints and hands and stuff are all worn out. And he said the problem is these people that came over here illegally work harder than anyone. Mm-hmm. They they bust their ass. They do the jobs that nobody wants to do. And when I say that, I say that loosely because there are fucking people who will mow yards and make money for a living that are not illegal immigrants. I, mm-hmm. I would do that. I don't mind working on yards. But anyway, uh, I, another it's not tangent. my own. That's for free. For for another, uh, yeah, freebies suck. <laughs> so he told me the issue is that these kids have grown up seeing how hard their parents have to work to make a living and have vowed to not work that hard. And because they are a minority, they get all these benefits going through college to get their education. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So what's what we're about to see is a major shift in the demand for people with college degrees versus the people with technical skills. And that's what I wanted to transition to you that I figured you were going to stay because Emmett does not have a college degree, yet he's sitting here and can fly an aircraft that neither Andy uh, nor I could start, let alone fly. Um, I could fly you good enough to get you off the ground if I had a big open space because we <laughs> might do a few circles, but when we land, we're all going to die. And anyway, I'm figuring that's what you were about to say. Am I guessing Make, right? Making it sound like I fly a space shuttle. Well, but hey. Hey, um, well send be. in your application for Space Force now because I hear the demand oh, is high. Oh, yeah, dude. Um, Space Force. Now, I went through an 18-month Votech program and graduated with a aircraft maintenance um, license, which actually technically is called an airframe and power plant license, AMP. So, so if you've ever heard but, of AMP, that's what that means. Yeah, back in, kind of on the aviation side of things. But Way back what, at the beginning. What a lot of people... <laughs> Way back. <laughs> yeah, way back. Back. Anyways, what a lot of people kind of lose sight of is nowadays everybody's preaching towards degrees. Oh, if you don't have a degree, you can't do this. You can't sure. do that. You can't do this. It's, it's essentially a high school it, education now. A plumber right now is making $110 an hour. Yep. Um. Yeah, I remember you told me that story. Everybody was pissed off because... You, so yeah. Emmett, Emmett's dad, Trey, is also um, an aircraft mechanic and has a shop up in Canadian. That was where Emmett was introduced into helicopters. And he was charging for working on these, you know, anywhere from 200000 to million-dollar helicopters was making $40 an hour less <laughs> than a fucking plumber. And uh, the plumber came to their house, and he was like... Yeah, he, he I was on the phone with him one day, and he... He goes, by the way, I went up with my labor rates. I said, really? And I don't think he'd gone up in, a, in quite some time. And and he goes, yeah. I said, well, well, what made you do that? And he goes, well, I actually hired a plumber. And I, <laughs> <laughs> what? And he goes, yeah, the the plumber I hired charged me a hundred, like 115 or 120 bucks an hour to fix whatever issue I had. And my dad's... A lot like your dad and probably a lot like your dad. No. Not Stepdad, like dad. whatever. <laughs> not like my dad at all. <laughs> Who, he, he fixes anything no, no. and everything that's he can. Jeff. He's nope. a handyman. Yeah. Keep trying. And, Maybe Todd, not Jeff. And so if, if, he has to, if he has to hire a plumber, you know, like, shit's serious. It's yeah, bad. It's bad. There's, there's doo-doo pun, blowing pun out of the sink. shit serious. Yeah. yeah, there's doo-doo blowing from the sink and to the ceiling, and that is all wrong. He, he told me that, and... You know, it makes sense, though. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's a different skill set, but it's you're working on such and, a higher level of things. Every and, single human being on this planet has sewage. And I honestly think that... No, not on the planet. I'm sorry. The, no, I the misspoke. Everyday blue-collar job, whether you're a plumber or an electrician or a mechanic, I think has been kind of thrown to the wayside by... Uh, higher ma- education. Ma- higher education, yeah. for sure. For sure. But I think that... The American, maybe Hollywood, may have something to do with that because they've kind of in past years have portrayed such skills as kind of oh you're a redneck or that's mm-hmm. low and you don't want to do that. Well, and that's just like uh, you know like all the Rice Boys. Yeah. Like we we talked about Caleb for a, a microsecond in the last podcast, but uh, these these guys that are it's getting so rare to be able to find good cow hands now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You know, good cowboys that can day work. But those guys, they'll go out there and they'll work harder than most of us do in a week for $150, $200 a day. Mm-hmm. That sounds like good money, except for you can't do it every day of the week. You just can't. Yeah. There's not that much work. And what's happening now is these these ranchers that have a lot of cattle, when they need to gather and they need 10, 12 cowboys, they can't even get enough. That's, that's where the uh, agricultural side of the helicopter stuff comes in. They can't find people to do it on horseback. I mean, the mm-hmm. helicopters are more, uh, you know, they're a little bit faster and they're a little more efficient, but it, it's just it, working, being a working man, like a, a manual laborer is going to become a, it's good. What's going to happen is, and you guys write this down, what's going to happen is there's going to be such a demand for it and not enough people doing it right. that the prices are going to skyrocket. Sure. And then guess what's going to happen? Everybody's going to abandon going to college. They're going to start learning how to do carpentry. They're going to start learning how to 
do plumbing. They're going to learn to be electricians. They're going to learn to weld. Dad said right now you can go, uh, you, there's 300 welding jobs in the state of Texas right now. 300 in the state of Texas for welding on pipelines. And they pay six fifty a day. You get a per diem. Where else can that's you don't even have to have a high school degree. If you can pass your your welding test and and qualify as a welder for a pipeline, which is it's oh. pretty stingent. You got to know what the fuck you're doing because they can't leak. But yeah. so it, funny story on the six fifty a day, dude. Yeah. On the pipeline side of things, um, last season I was up in Alaska and I spent three months up on a National Science Foundation contract in the Arctic Circle. The Alaska pipeline runs. From the very top of Alaska all the way What's down. What's it called? The Alieska Pipeline. Where do they get that name? It's okay. fucking Eskimo for something. <laughs> I don't know. That's Eskimo for Alaska? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey there, white guy. Um, <laughs> this is and, my pipeline. Anyways, this pipeline runs pretty well the entire state of Alaska all the way from the very top to the very bottom. Well... This camp that I was flying out of was a National Science Foundation camp. They're all up there studying global warming. Well. Fucking Al Gore. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Al Gore. Climate got the change. Internet it got, it got you change. some money, though. Yeah, no. Put, <laughs> put some coin in my pocket. Anyways, so about once a week, they'd have a speaker in camp. And they I don't know if they'd just drag them off the side of the Dalton Highway and say, hey, come in here and talk. But one of them was somebody who was on the Alaska Pipeline, which is like just outside camp. It runs above ground. And so they get this person in there talking about how they built the Alaska Pipeline and how they built all pipelines, period. Which, you know, there's actually a lot to it. It's not just you go out there and you weld some shit together and pump some oil through it. Mm -hmm. I had a... PhD student tell me the very next morning, he goes, yeah, you know, that thing about that, that presentation about the pipeline last night was, that was really, really interesting. There was, I think there's some people that took a lot from it. I said, yeah, he goes, yeah, I just, I didn't realize that, you know, that much went in the pipelines. I didn't know that they had to be inspected and, you know, it's like, <laughs> fuck. Well, fuck yeah, they you didn't do. know that somebody had to weld together every single, like, 60-foot <laughs> joint that goes down yeah, that thing? <laughs> you know, and it's a lot of people thinking like that. Oh, I know. It's, it's because thing. they're so far removed from society. The, the vast majority of the populace is in the major cities. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And they, I don't know. I think that's probably why we ended up like we are. We have oh. the ability to go out on four-wheelers. Yeah ride country roads, have camp outs, act stupid. And when our they're acting stupid is doing drugs and sneaking into clubs when they're not old enough and still in high school. And our acting stupid might have been stealing four Zimas from your mom and going. <laughs> it's still on a road sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still on road signs. Like that's maxed out. Maybe shooting a few. But anyway, well, we have, we have uh, we've really covered a lot of shit. <laughs> I don't even really know what all we talked about. So we I'm going to have to. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. You know, there's only three things that you have to know as a plumber. Three things is all. K Diablo. Hot water's on the right. Shit does not roll uphill. Payday's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I just saved you a whole lot of money. Yeah, that's Perfect. pretty. That makes it pretty easy. I gotta pretty, know. I, there might be more to it than that. That's I don't it. Know. Nope. But I'm telling you, hot water on the left. Shit doesn't roll uphill. Payday's Friday. <laughs> Well, all right, so we're going to close this shit down. We've already been rolling over an hour and a half. Uh, Emmett, do you want to plug your uh, Instagram or anything? Uh, Bahama Hilo guy on Instagram. All right, so that, at, that at world, Bahama Hilo guy. That third world country that he <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking <laughs> roughed it. What a shithole that Bahama <laughs> He roughed it. Fuck. I don't even think Trump calls that a shithole. No. But no, so, okay, so we got at Bahama Hilo guy. Andy? Uh, I'm on Instagram at Andy underscore Shaver. Uh, dove season's coming up, so if you're into that sort of shit, and waterfowl season's going to be close behind, so if you're into birds and all that stuff dying, you know, follow me. We've also got a, uh, a business account at Stanford Hunting Outfitter, so look at all that. And uh, if you're into that sort of thing, follow us. Yeah, for sure, and uh, Andy's been posting a lot of good stuff. Uh, pretty much the whole summer's been pictures from the last season. Uh, one little thing I'd like to plug. I am working on finishing up this damn video that I keep opening new projects around my house. And now we're back into helicopter hunting. 
Next month, uh, I'm going to release the Goose Brothers video. The Goose Brothers. The Goose Brothers. They've talked about it on their podcast. It's I'm really proud of it. It's one of the first true passion projects I've gotten to do on my video production side of things. And I, I'm really proud of it. It's going to come out. I think you'll be really impressed if you're an outdoorsman at all. It kind of it's, it's going to be a quick seven to ten minute video documenting a little brief glimpse into the life of being uh, brothers that are career goose guides. What goes into it, and you know, of course, a lot of slow mo good shit where stuff dies. So keep your eyes peeled for that. That'll come out on the Pork Choppers page. All of our stuff across the board is Pork Choppers Aviation. Instagram, Pork Choppers Aviation. Facebook, Pork Choppers Aviation. Twitter is fucking stupid unless you're famous, so I don't do that. <laughs> and, uh, of course, we got man shit. You can check us out on uh, helihunts.com or go to porkchoppersaviation.com. They go to the same spot. But, anyhow, we really appreciate you guys taking an hour and a half out of your life to listen to all of this. That's yeah, pretty much like throwing a ping pong ball around a room of topics is what we did tonight. Did we cover your notes? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had three. <laughs> I had three notes, and we finished with millennials and continued for another hour. So okay. things worked out okay. The Coors lattes paid off. Yeah. Anyhow, so you want to sign off, Emmett? Ew, later. <laughs> All right, Andy. See you guys. Thank you for listening. And this is Eric Lewis with the Man Shit Podcast. We are signing off. Emmett, slap that table. Aram, aram. I didn't get a wrong one. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs>